So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the WBO World's Weight Champion, Sandy Ryan. Sandy, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. All good. Glad to hear it. You're out in Las Vegas, of course, at the moment. We'll talk about that in due course. But first of all, I want to take you back to September when you were last in the ring. Um, the draw, as it turned out, um, with Jessica McCaskill, which a lot of people felt that you were unlucky to only get a draw in that fight. When the decision was about to be announced, did you have any doubt in your mind that you'd get it? No, I was I was confident that I'd won the fight. Um, as of a lot of nearly the whole of the boxing world was, but um, boxing it, it is what it is. Anything can happen. How did you feel when it did go? to a draw, does it feel like a defeat because you, for most people, won the fight? Or did it feel like a win, really, because you knew in yourself you'd done enough? No, it did. A little bit felt like a loss because I should have five belts around me now, not just one. But um, then when I sit back and I just take the positives from it, I got a lot of positives from it. So um, all I can do is just take them with me in the future and hopefully down the line we get that rematch made. What were those positives? Was it, you know, getting on top really of someone who's a, a world level performer, someone who's who's been in with some yeah. top fighters? Yeah, me and like putting my name there, you know, and people seeing like who I am and even getting supporters from America, which was great and just getting the back in, and yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of positives from it. And we found out about a month later that you decided to relocate to the US for your training camps going forward. Had you been thinking about that for some time, or, or was it more after the fight with McCaskill? <clears throat> um, I was kind of for a while. I was in, in Portugal a lot, so. And when I was doing my training, I was away from Derby because for me, being away to train and do a training camp, that is what's best for me. It makes me focus. It allows me to be, be away from any distractions. And I can just train, rest, eat, train again. Like There's nothing else that I need to do. Whereas if I was in Derby, there's a, a lot going on for me in Derby. So... Um, it's something I needed to do and uh, like some people couldn't come on the journey with me abroad so I just had to make that decision to make the move and yeah and uh, Vegas was uh, the next the next uh, step Why was it Vegas? Obviously as you said you've been training a bit in Portugal before that why make the decision to have when you make a permanent move to go to Vegas? Um, I feel like the training is great over here and like the sparring. Um, the sparring more so as well. I'm getting a lot of top rounds. So um, like a few weeks ago, I was sparring Clarissa um, and I'm sparring some of the, some good guys out here as well. So but the the training in Vegas is it's really good. In America, the training is good. And who are you working with over there predominantly? Who's kind of going to be the head trainer, if you like? Um. Well, I've got Kay and Flick that are in that are working with me day in day out. So um. Yeah, that's a. And that's Kay well, Karuma, who's worked in the past with Michaela Mayer and other top fighters out there, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So did you know those guys before you went out to Vegas or is it something you've kind of put together yeah. on the fly? Um, yeah, I knew. I've known Kay since the amateur days from when I was on Great Britain. So we used to go to Colorado Springs. GB used to take us there. He was um, Team USA. I've known him for a long time. So, um, always kept in, in touch and uh, it's just someone that I trusted to build me a team. And um, so, yeah, it that was just uh, 
a plan and a made golf and made the move and moved across the other side Good. of the world. Uh, so yeah, but well, it's going to be worth it. What's that side of it been like, like the personal side? You know, you, you said you want to get away from distractions, which is the positive. But I'm guessing you must miss certain things about Derby and your family, most of all. Yeah. Um, like, I'm kind of like a... I am an independent person and I like to be alone a lot. But being on the other side of the world, it's kind of... It, it does feel different. And... Um, I do miss I do miss home. So that's probably been one of the hardest parts for me. Is uh has Dave been out yet? While well, you've been over there? He's not. He's slacking. <laughs> he must be here. The comeback's gone back another few years. Exactly. <laughs> one day, one day. Um you mentioned sparring Clarissa there. Uh, what what was that like? Had you sparred her previously? Yeah, so that was the second time that we we had sparred. Um, yeah, it was it it was great work. Um, real top, top top high level sparring. So I'm grateful to get the rounds in with her. Um, I like she's a fighter that I've always respected since the amateur days and what she's achieved. So for me to get the rounds in, um, yeah, I took a lot from it. And another person you sparred at the back end of last year was Katie Taylor, of course, ahead of the rematch mm. with Chantel Cameron. And she actually came out after the fight and gave you a lot of credit for her getting revenge over Cameron. She said you were a crucial part of that victory. How, how did that make you feel? I know. Um, just grateful, you know. I'm happy that I was um, able to help her redeem that that win and just help her in her camp. Um, means a lot and for, to to come from like Katie she don't really speak much does she so um for her to say that it meant a lot and it just it just show that um what I'm capable of and where I'm at at this spot in the sport did you get an inkling when you were sparring her in that camp that she had the right tactics the right strategy to overcome Chantel in the ring yeah I believed in her yeah I believed in her and I was, when I was talking to her as well. And yeah, I did. I, I did believe in her. And do you get a level of satisfaction when you see her actually go out and get the win, knowing how much of a part you've played getting there? Yeah, it was nice. It was nice, you know, and even speaking to Russ the next day, her trainer, and he was grateful as well. And them the little things like that, they mean a lot. And I was happy. It's very happy for her. Because I know it was well. I know what, coming back from a loss, going straight into the rematch, what it feels like, the pressure that's on you. So I was so, I was like really happy for her to um, get that revenge. Good stuff. Now, Terry Harper, next up, March 23rd. Was there ever a consideration of you going up to fight for her belt at 154 so you could become a, a two-weight world champion? Yeah, well, they didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> that's very honest. <laughs> uh, fair enough. It's just this. That's just the facts. So, would you yeah, have fancied so, it though? That's... Oh, of course, of course, I would. I wouldn't mind being a two two eight world champion. But um, yeah, they they wanted to fight for my belt, so then then yeah, they still got their oh, uh, one hundred fifty four after after the fight. I thought you were gonna say after I beat her then <laughs> a bit of. Confidence well, shining yeah. through, but yeah, I get, I get the point. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, what do you make of Terry, especially since she's made that big move up in weight from from when she was at Super Feather and, and lightweight, of course. Yeah, she's 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 a great fighter. She's done well. She's grew good into the into the weight. Um, but she's always been in shape, hasn't she? So, um, that's what I mean. She's a great athlete and a credit to the sport. But um, it's young females looking up to her and, and so yeah this is it's a great that's why I say it's a big fight great all British fight and uh and that's what that's what the people are loving her about this fight as well so um yeah I respect I respect Terry um Harper and it's yeah I'm excited I'm excited 
What do you think are the big advantages you have that are going to make the difference on the night? Um, I believe that uh, I do, I do all an all round. Uh, I believe that what what Terry does, I can do better. Um, she's a great fighter, but I believe in myself and I'm confident in myself that um, I'm a much better fighter, and. I'll prove that March twenty third and and still, so yeah, I'm just gonna make sure I get do the do my uh do the talking in the ring, get the job done. But um, yeah, we know we know what's what. I believe so as well. Having recently come off the wrong end of a close decision, unfair decision in most people's eyes. Obviously, Sheffield's a lot closer to home than Orlando. But it is still kind of more her territory than yours. She's from Yorkshire, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Are you at all concerned about the judging? I just have to make sure I don't leave it to the judges. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I understand that um, Harper has a, a lot of support. Um, I understand that it's closer to her back her background. Um. But um, I've got a lot of uh, Derby people coming as well, which I'm grateful for, and uh, which is going to be a great atmosphere with them both. So I believe it's gonna it's gonna be a great night, a great atmosphere. Is there any part of you that kind of relishes being the, the one that they want to boo, the one that they want to get on a bit while you're in there with the home favourite? <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't mind to be fair because at the end of the day it's just me and her in the ring. Crowd don't it don't mean nothing. So if uh in if you can deal with that, you're fine. Which I feel like I can and um I've been in I've been in people's backgrounds in my last few fights, so um I'm okay with that. Because I'm I'm confident enough that when I'm in there that I can get the job done. I think people forget how few pro fights you've actually had, given all you've achieved already. Did you ever think you'd be this far along so soon? Yeah, it's come, it's come, it's come sooner, sooner than expected. Especially my world title fight, um, but I wouldn't change it because I am where I am now, and uh, I feel like I'm thriving with it. Um, I'm growing with it. And uh, it's where it's where I belong. So, um, yeah, with minimal fights, um, I can beat these girls that are had more than me and uh, and prove that. And so, what's the what's the kind of long term plan? Is it going through the weights? Is it unifying at one four seven? Is it the big name fights? What what do you want to do? Yeah, there's so many big fights to be made um, now as well, and. And then in the welterweight division, and then you got people talking on Twitter back and forth saying they've come up to one four seven, and um, so there is big names and big fights to be made. So, and I want to just be in big fights. So, I'm excited. Like I can't really see what's going to happen in the future because nobody knows what. But I know there's going to be big fights, um, and big nights. So I'm excited. All that time you spent on GB, traveling around the world. Sometimes it was a slog, of course, as well. Not always getting the decisions, perhaps, that you deserve. Does it all kind of feel worth it now? Do you feel like you're at the top now? Yeah, because it, they're all experiences, aren't they? So I feel like it's like it's just like life and good things, bad ha things happen. They what make you into what you are today. So, um. I'll just carry all the experience I have with me um, in what I do in my training camps and then in fight night. Great stuff. Sandy, really appreciate your time. Best of luck on March Thank 23rd you. and yeah, hopefully see you when you when you're back in England. Yeah, see you soon.